Well, Dave, over the past year, uh, amongst other things, you've been reviewing the, the structure of the whole club and in particular the, the football structure. Um, you've brought in the new management team, but there's also other changes you're, you're going to make as well. Yeah, well, I think these are, are changes that the, the board um, is making and they haven't just been uh, decided overnight. I mean, it's almost four years. Four years ago, we reviewed the whole business of the club on and off the field. Um, and in May of, I think it was, 2019, you know, we, um, we laid out our, our strategy both on and off the field. Uh, we've been managed, uh, we've, ac we've executed um, off the field a kind of revamp, real focus on fan engagement, the initiatives, Aber DNA, so on and so forth. Um, and the team there is, is doing really well. Um, and similarly, um, on the field, uh, that area of the business is, is a massive investment for the club. I mean, 90% of the, uh, pretty much the cost of running the club is on the football business unit, for want of a better term. So I'm uh, delighted to announce today that, uh, uh, that, that the new director of um, the football business unit, director of football, uh, Stephen Gunn, um, Stephen's been promoted, he's been with the club 20 years, he's highly educated, he has a, a master's in human resources as well and when you think of the hundreds of people involved with the club from players, young players, to the first team, to the women's team, everything that goes with it. So aspects that Stephen um, is responsible for and, and in many ways has been managing separately anyway will go from all of the, the academy to the professional side, to the women's side, but it's also contracts, human resources, uh, and all that goes with the running of that. I mean, in this day and age, we have a duty of care, rightly so, to many, many people. And so um, keeping um, the engine kind of well-oiled and on top of everything we do is, is critical. And um, as we um, announced, uh, Russ Richardson, our lead scout for many years, uh, Russ has, has moved on from the club, which we announced, and we thank Russ for everything he's done for the club and the travel he's put in, um, being based in England. Uh, but a critical role for Stephen to fill now is a head of recruitment. In this modern kind of day and age, this is about the use of some incredible technologies that are out there, looking worldwide, taking advantage of the collaboration we've got with Atlanta as well. So um, that's why we're announcing this today. Um, and so the whole uh, football business unit is going to come under Stephen. There's no pressure on you, Stephen. There's a lot of pressure on you, Stephen. And Stephen will report directly to me as the executive chairman, as does uh, Kevin McKeever, our finance and operations director, and Rob Wicks, our commercial uh, director and I of course report in to, to the board. So excited to be going through this process um, and we think it's the right strategy for Aberdeen Football Club. Okay Dave, there's a lot in there so we'll break it down in a minute but Stephen just to come to you first of all, I mean many congratulations on the appointment, I mean I've known you a long time, I've known how hard you've worked for the club and as Dave says in a real pressurised environment so very pleased for you. Just explain a wee bit about your role. Dave touched on it a wee bit. I mean, it, director of football, it, it, a director of football at every club is probably different. Is that fair to say? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, each club has to make its uh, its own decisions. What's what's right for for itself, and we've uh, we've had a way of working uh, now for some time. We have spent a fair bit of time over the last uh, eighteen months to two years uh, working on our football strategy going forward. We've spoke plenty about it. Um, already and uh, we need people to be custodians of that uh, football strategy, buy into that right across the, the football operation and I suppose my role is going to be um, bringing people along uh, along with me in terms of trying to fulfil that and ultimately that's for, uh, that's for success on the pitch. Um, I think we're lucky with the resource that we've got here, with the staff that we've got, a hugely dedicated staff and um, all of us crave um, success. We've just came off the back of, um, a, a, you know, a period where we'd like to have done better on on the pitch. Um, we're looking forward to next season with with Stephen and Alan Scott and the the rest of the team. 
um, and see what we can achieve. And my role is to uh, make sure that we've got the infrastructure in place to help those guys achieve what they want to achieve on the pitch. But as Dave was saying, it's not just first team. You've got the Youth Academy, you've got the women's team, you've got the medical, sports science, performance, support operations. There's a lot in the role, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, to be successful in de delivering uh, that role, it's about the relationships, obviously, I've built up internally over time, the understanding I've got for those uh, different functions. Um, a number of the areas you spoke of there are critical in terms of what we're trying to achieve uh, on the pitch to help us, obviously, um, uh, get to that UEFA top 100 spot. Um, we've hit that ceiling, if not just quite been able to get to the uh, to the group stages. Um, we've, like I said, we've had a way of working for some time, and I suppose to get over that hurdle, it's what can we do differently? How can we be positive? Um, and you touched on the youth academy there, for example. That's going to be absolutely critical to um, our success. Uh, going forward because we know we're not going to be able to compete with uh, with the teams financially that we, we're likely to face in some of the European uh, competitions and um, what better way to, to go and achieve that to, than to have a, a core of homegrown uh, talent coming through um, in our team and that's something that obviously uh, Stephen and the guys have uh, fully bought into. It was a big part of the recruitment process for the new uh, for the new manager and that's something that I'll be looking to try and make sure that we um, we have uh, going forward. It's a lot of responsibility on young shoulders, well, youngish shoulders, <laughs> but I mean you have more than 20 years experience, is that right, at the club and in the football department and during that time I mean, you've pretty much seen it all haven't you? Yeah absolutely, um, you know worked with, uh, worked with a number of managers, worked with different structures, worked previously with a director of football Worked with a chief, chief executive, now obviously working with uh, closely with, with Dave as executive chairman. Um, we speak uh, every day. Um, we're obviously both on the same uh, wavelength in terms of where uh, we want to take, um, take the direction of the football operation and how that fits into everything else that we're doing on the, um, on the non-football side. So, yeah, there's not a lot that we haven't experienced in, in that 20 years and... I'd like to think that that's given me, um, given me the grounding to be successful in this role, um, but it's also allowed me to build up relationships externally, um, whether it's with governing bodies, whether it's with other clubs, uh, agents, players, uh, over that piece, and um, I'll be um, utilising as many of those relationships as I can to help us do what we want to do here. If you talked about the, the new head of recruitment, I mean, just maybe speak a wee bit more about what type of person from the world of football are you looking for? Um, and also maybe what's the sort of time scale for the appointment? Well, um, we begin the, the search process um, immediately, or Stephen begins the search process on behalf of the club and, and the board. Um, you know, a head of recruitment, um, you know, and in some other cases they're called directors of football, right, um, is a critical role. It's one where... I mean, the technology available today for searching for talent, to acquire talent, is, is incredible. And, and Stephen, um, in particular, has spent time looking at numbers of different systems. We did with a, another one last week, one of the top La Liga clubs. And so um, being able to use technology as well as get eyes on players, you know, actually in live games, which is still important, the ability to collaborate with partners like Atlanta so that we can you know, look at scouting of players, South America, Americas in their case, in our case, we broadened for the whole of Europe. We're able now to tap into search, particularly on, on players. For example, the, the technology today, if you want to look for a player that's in a plays in, in the midfield in a 4-3-3 system predominantly with these attributes, um, it's incredible that the, the time and effort that saves. So the, the ability to um, have a global view, to, to clearly understand, you know, we, we love the term, we might be wrong, but we won't be confused. We have a clear strategy on how we want to play and go about that. Everyone's bought into it in the club, right? All the teams, all the levels from academy through to first team. So it's finding someone there that is experienced enough to uh, un to, to embrace the technology and to, to, to kind of leave no stone unturned uh, across the globe for talent that we would bring in 
uh, one to, in the younger cases, to complement our youth academy, right? Um, as well as bring in seasoned professionals that we think can do a job for us as well. And of course, that will include Scotland and England as well. But it's predominantly been uh, Scotland and England we've looked at before. So the world is a bigger place and football is changing rapidly. I don't know if you'd add to that, Stephen. Um, I suppose the best way uh, to put it in the opportunities that we have uh, going forward, I think, is if you imagine... Um, the football player market as a pyramid with the very elite players at the very top it's, and, and it's narrow at the top there so there's probably only a handful of players worldwide for example that will make Man City better so they're fishing in a very small pond whereas at our level um, there's opportunities out there there's probably you know a couple of thousand players um, across Europe or across uh, the world that could come to uh, Aberdeen and make um, and make our team better but it's about making sure that we've got the right infrastructure in terms of uh, the people to go and exploit those markets but also giving them uh, the tools to, to do that effectively. Um, so again that'll be part of my role to make sure that um, whoever the successful uh, candidate is, um, is su supported appropriately so that they can actually go and deliver what we expect of them. And Stephen it goes without saying it's obviously a critical role, it's vital we get the right person in. Yeah, it absolutely is. And I mean, that um, it goes without saying that anyone we, we bring into the club, uh, we want to make sure that they're buying in, uh, the club values. Um, you know, Aberdeen's an institution that's been uh, carved out over um, over 100 years. So uh, it's a special place to, uh, to work and um, it's not something we uh, take for granted. We know um, that uh, we're, we've got to be tested um, every day. Um, we're accountable for, for what we do and uh, anyone that walks through that front door will, will I suppose, feel a little bit of that, that pressure as well to deliver. Um, but we want uh, people to be enthusiastic, we want them to be challenged um, and I'm sure that the, the candidate that we, um, that we select through this process, and it will be a, um, a robust uh, process, will uh, we'll take our time to make sure that we get uh, the, right, the right individual. Dave, as you said, Russ has left and we, you know, we certainly wish him all the, all the best and thank him for, for all the work he's put in. But just where are we with the recruitment at the moment for the new manager, the new players? I mean, it, it won't dis disrupt things, will it, the, the change? No, li listen, since, um, since the, um, the transition um, that took place, or the trans transition through Stephen took place with Russ, then obviously um, Stephen and, um, and Alan and, and Stephen Glass uh, have been at uh, you know, the recruitment and picked up and been really focused. I mean, they've only been here four weeks, during which you know they've had a number of games to take on, kind of maybe a change in approach to uh, how we play um, and all the recruitment. So it's been a really, a really baptism of fire, so to speak. But the good news is, is that Stephen and Alan have had time to take a look at all the players um, that were here and decisions for for next season. Um, I think that um, it's always sad to see um, players go, particularly those that are tenured at the club. And you know, and Shea has been a fantastic servant for the club. I'm going to reiterate that. You know, he he won a trophy at the club, and he's been a true. Uh, he kind of wears his heart on his sleeve for the Dons, and um, and of course he's he's staying in Aberdeen. But uh, you know, Shea has been a fantastic servant. Ash has been a great servant as well. And similarly, you know, the time that Tommy has had um, here with us, it's been great that he's had a season of, um, of almost kind of injury-free, uh, uh, so to speak. But at the end of the day, um, you know, we'll have a strong budget again as we'll come out in our financials when next season kind of going through. It's really up to the manager how... Uh, he, Stephen, has sat down how he wants to spend uh, the wage bill that we've got. And so, um, so, so excited for this next period. Uh, let's not forget that we've got the Celtic captain and we've got the Motherwell captain, both leaders. Um, Declan, you know, a Scotland international that are on board. Um, when you have 24, 25, 26 people in a squad, you want to get the right balance in the squad 
Um, so you can't hire 25 people that are first team starters on first team starter wages. You've got to get that balance right and so that you can invest the right money in the right players in the right positions. It's no surprise to any of us that, um, you know, or any of the fans that we were challenged in the last third of the field um, for, for, for most of the season. And so that's the area um, that Stephen and uh, <laughs> Stephen and Stephen and, uh, and, and Alan will be focused on. But I'll just remind the fans, it's important that we take our time to get the right people. Stephen, come to you. Just a wee bit on what you've spoken about. I mean, are you hopeful of getting most of the business done quite early during the summer? Or is it maybe meet nearer when the players come back for when the season starts? And also, how does it sort of feed into the wider club strategy, the recruitment this year? Well, Dave uh, spoke there about balance, getting balance in the squad. And that's going to be critically important for us. Um, again, Dave mentioned already, you know, Scott Brown, Declan Gallagher uh, getting added. Um, two leaders that are going to, uh, you would imagine, play lots of games and be a big influence uh, on the dressing room. Not every player that comes in will, will have, that, uh, have that profile. Um, we also want to make sure that we don't block too many pathways for young players. Um, we've got development plans for a number of the guys that are, that are already um, in the system. Um, and we're looking ahead sort of two and three years as to when um, some of them uh, might emerge. We're seeing some of them emerge uh, now. Dave mentioned Calvin Ramsey, Jack McKenzie um, is the other one. And there's also uh, a group that we're really excited about um, just below that. So we, uh, I suppose my role um, in this, not from a technical football perspective in terms of um, selecting players, that's not what it's going to be, but um, making sure that we do stick to that, um, stick to that strategy. Um, making sure that we do have development plans in place uh, for those uh, young players, not blocking their, their pathways, giving them the opportunities um, at the right time, um, how we manage uh, um, our loans. Again, the, uh, Dave touched on the Atlanta United relationship. Um, just before COVID, we nearly put uh, Jack McKenzie um, out to, on loan at Atlanta. Uh, that was um, restricted because the travel restrictions came in at the time and then obviously we went into lockdown. So unfortunately that didn't happen. However, Jack found a different pathway on a loan at Forfer, came back in the in the January window and he's flourished in our um, our first team since. So um, that's something we're, uh, we're really pleased about. But that, the profiling of the squad, future-proofing the squad, um, not, I suppose, finding ourselves in the position we find ourselves now, where we've got a large number of players um, uh, out of contract. Um, so we need to uh, look at what we want to do now for future years. And we're already talking to um, a few players that are already in the building about extending their contracts. Um, and th that's players that are, are not currently out of contract. So we want to make sure that we keep uh, the, the players that we want um, here for a, for a long time. So is this it's almost like succession planning, is that right? You're almost looking sort of three, four years ahead, is that right? And, and just, you're almost trying to predict future squads, is that fair to say? Yeah, absolutely. We actually do an exercise called predicting uh, the future squad. Um, you, you probably didn't know that, but we, uh, that's an exercise that we actually do. And uh, what that informs us in terms of, you know, how many minutes we think uh, players will play, um, what value we think financially they're going to bring to the team, we have a um, a pathway in terms of when we think uh, it, the optimal time to sell some of our um, young developing talent will be. Um, we want to make sure that we don't, um, you know, sell them all in the same window. We still need to be competitive uh, on the pitch as well. So um, we're being a little bit greedy here because we want to achieve so many different things. We want to be competitive on the pitch. We want to build a value in the squad that we can then reinvest back if we if we sell players, but we also want that throughput of, uh, of homegrown uh, talent. So, I mean, to, to try and achieve all three of those things will be, um, will be a challenge, but we're confident that we can uh, step up to that challenge. Just, I mean, signing players, it's not an exact science, is it? I mean, some work out, some don't, but every player that is signed, there's an enormous amount of work that actually goes into that, isn't it? Just background and players, that type of thing. Yeah, I mean... Um, I think uh, you know people think that we wait for the out of contract list to come out at the end of the season and um, and we go through that and start to pick some names off. But 
uh, there's been a, a huge amount of work over the years uh, gone into um, you know, uh, convincing people that Aberdeen's the right um, opportunity uh, for them, um, convincing people to move home, move families, and uh, move children out of uh, out of school. Um, so we need to make sure that we always have a good story to tell uh, potential players coming to the club. And I'd like to think that um, we've had more success than not um, over the last number of years. And uh, Dave's already touched on the work that uh, that Russ Richardson. Uh, did um, during uh, Derek's tenure and uh, we, I just want to echo what Dave already said, a, a huge uh, thanks to Russ. I've been in the trenches with him um, a number of times uh, on, the, on the lead up to, to deadline day um, to, get things, uh, to get things over the line and it's that sort of commitment going forward um, that we're going to need to see from obviously myself and uh, Stephen Allen and others that are going to be involved in, in that process. Um, we've all got a role to play to try and bring uh, the talent we want to, to Aberdeen. I was just just to add to that, Mal. You know, um, and and you see lots and lots of names attached with Aberdeen and speculation across the board, and um, many many of the the players that are raised there uh, are not players we're ignoring, right? Um, it takes two to tango, and so uh, not in every case. Does every player want to come to Aberdeen or want to come to Aberdeen for the right reasons? So, um, you know, uh, <laughs> this last, having been back here the last almost seven weeks now, I mean, it's um, every night, right? Um, you and Stephen and, and Alan, the guys, videos after videos after videos till early hours of the morning, you know, and, and, and talking to potential players um, as well. But it has to be right for us. It has to be right for the players that want to come here for the reasons that um, um, Stephen mentioned. And if any player is really hesitant about really wanting to be at Aberdeen, if we've got to constantly chase them, chase them, chase them, we don't want them here. They have to want to be here for all the right reasons that Stephen uh, mentioned. But uh, no, we're, um, we're confident that over this next uh, period of time, uh, our goal clearly is to get the work done as early as possible, um, and um, and so um, you know it's difficult to to ask the fact. Listen, I'm not a patient guy myself, so I actually empathise with the fans. Like, like where are these guys coming in? Where are we going to fill these holes? Last year we had nobody out a contract. Thomas Cherney, who resigned, right, and then retired, nobody out a contract, and we added players. Stephen, no pressure, mate. It's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> Just finally, right? Taylor fans, what's it actually like signing a player? It must be a great feeling because the amount of work that goes in and things, let's just say, things don't always go as smoothly. Because the problem nowadays is more often than not, the names appear in the papers, right? And that's the club can't help that, okay? That's various reasons, agents and that type of thing. The names appear. And then the pressure's on you to actually get the, the, over the line. But there's an awful lot of obstacles in the way, isn't there? Many obstacles. Um, you know, convincing the player to come if the player's already at a club. Um, if he's not and we want him to, him to come, it usually means that um, he's got a good level of ability, which means that there's going to be other suitors uh, for them. So we're always competing uh, for the best players. And I suppose because we, um, we've we had that pool of talent that, um, that we're wanting to, if it's coming from out with Scotland or, or it's already within Scotland, we'll, we'll always be competing with the same types of clubs, Hibs, Hearts, Dundee United. Um, and that's, I suppose, why we're looking to, uh, you know, open up our, our horizons beyond, um, beyond the UK. Um, how can we uh, most benefit from our relationships and the Atlanta United partnerships there? Um, we're, we're looking at, uh, at other relationships that can help benefit us going forward um, as well but um, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't say it's, it, it, it's exciting um, it is a challenge and obviously every time a player puts a name on the paper and uh, we sign it at our end that's a huge commitment and um, it's a huge commitment from us committing to that player and that's a huge commitment for the player uh, committing to the club for two, three, four years um, whatever uh, that may be and there's a pressure attached to that to get it right on both sides Players can make decisions to go to clubs that might not suit them. And Dave mentioned you've, you have to do it for the right, the right reasons. So if players want to come here, I suppose, to be, be competing at the top end of the league, 
helping us get over that hurdle in European uh, competition. And, uh, you know, we've had our fair share of disappointment recently um, and we've seen uh, a team celebrate uh, at our home ground finishing third. We've seen a team lift a championship um, on the day that we, uh, that we got defeated by them and uh, we're hungry for that. Um, we, we don't want to be on, on the other side of that and that's something that we crave. Um, so we take that disappointment off the last couple of weeks and we use it as our, um, our drive to go and make sure that that's us next time around. So yeah, let's give you the final one. one. Yeah, and, and, and Stephen's right. Listen, we have high aspirations as club and it's important that you, um, that you have these aspirations and it takes a lot to pull together to, to achieve it. For example, we set an aspiration over the medium term getting to 15,000 season ticket holders because that would put, for example, about, I mean, right now the season tickets cover about 15% of our costs of running the club. Thankfully, DNA, um, that between the season ticket holders and the DNA members, it gets to about 20%, which is, is kind of vital. If, if we can go from 8,000 to 15,000 season ticket holders, all of a sudden we have another couple of million available there to invest in our operation. Everybody's doing their bit. We've been through hell this last year. A 10 million hole to find and everyone has, has contributed, you know? And so it's important for, and myself, and you know, I, I, I like the term, it's about giving a people or giving the club a hand up, but not necessarily a hand out. What we do has to be sustainable in the long term. Does it require um, cash for operating purposes? Ignoring the fact that we've got 50 million to find for a new stadium, then that's what we'll do and continue to do. But um, having a clear strategy that we've got now and how we're going to um, dovetail into that and be the best we can be is key. Let's not forget, next season will probably be the most competitive league in Scotland in a long, long, long time. I mean, a few years ago, there were no Hearts, no Hebs, no Dundee United, no Rangers, right? They're all there now, which is, which is good. It's competitive, you know? It's great when we get back to fans having Dundee United. It's great going down to Dundee United. It's great going to, to Tyne Castle and to Easter Road, right? We, uh, as a club, will be co very competitive wage-wise. Our financial results versus clubs similar to us state that already. And so what we're trying to do this year is to take our wage, significant wage bill and use it as best we can use it, right? There's one thing, and I know I'm kind of rambling on a bit here, but there's one thing that Stephen and the guys showed me when I, I, just two years ago, which is it's a traffic lights. If you're spending X thousand a week on a player versus X hundred a week on a player, your expectations of the minutes of these players are, you know, higher, decent, much lower. And when you see, for example, um, in terms of playing time, the highest paid players up in the red zone, right, with cost, that's an imbalance, right? We have got to, and listen, every club faces it. In, in some ways. So we have got to get that right balance between the players that we're investing in at the high, uh, the more experienced players, let's say, through to the younger guys coming through so that we've got green, so to speak, right? Yeah. All, over, uh, all over the board. So this is an opportunity for a reset. And, um, you know, we've obviously announced as well that, um, that, that, that Jet has um, joined the club. And um, Stephen and the guys see him as being one of a number of attacking options, a number of which we've still got to go out and get, but believe he will be a, an important player for Aberdeen um, in the next year or so. So, you know, my appeal, which is tough to ask the fans, is to be patient as we go through this. Trust us, right? Uh, and, and again, as Stephen well knows, I'm not that patient a guy. You know, he's probably, when I'm back in the States and he sees a U.S. number coming in at 11 at night, he's probably throwing his phone out the window. But My wife is. <laughs> your wife is. But, but Steve, right, everybody is, everybody is up for this with the club. 
let's, in my message then to everybody is, let's do this together. We'll continue to be as transparent as we can be. This season is over. We've learned a lot of lessons. There's a reset, and we're certainly up for it, and hope the fans are up for it as well. Guys, we could sit here all day talking, but Stephen has to go sign some players, so we better let him go. <laughs> but Stephen, just finally, I mean, you do a brilliant job for the club, and I know how much the club means to you, so I'd like it for you, and we wish you all the very best. Thank you very much, man. Appreciate it. Have you on Red TV soon? Thank you. Thanks, man.